Welcome to the Mount Sinai Health System. The Mount Sinai Health System is an integrated healthcare system providing exceptional medical care to our local and global communities. Encompassing the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and eight hospital campuses in the New York metropolitan area, as well as a large regional ambulatory footprint, Mount Sinai is internationally acclaimed for its excellence in research, patient care, and education across a range of specialties. Now that your company has been approved to work as a contractor at Mount Sinai, we'd like to take a few moments of your time to go over our expectations for performing work safely at any of our locations. This short video will guide workers and construction management personnel through our construction safety requirements. The initial part of this video provides instruction to construction personnel regarding general safety requirements. The second part of the video gives additional guidance to superintendents and construction management personnel in requirements for running a job site in a safe and compliant manner. We hope that these guidelines provide you with all of the necessary tools and information to make your time here safe and productive. If you ever have any questions regarding any content in this video, please contact either your superintendent, project manager, or environmental health and safety. Construction is an inevitable but essential aspect of operating any healthcare facility. Improvements and updates need to be made, and construction can be a complex and potentially dangerous process within hospitals. Any size construction project can risk exposing patients to dust and mold spores, noise, vibrations, odors, or chemicals. We have patients who have been placed in our care who may have special health needs or who may not be able to save themselves during an emergency. Therefore, we must be able to rely on contractors to create and maintain a safe work environment. Remember, safety is everyone's responsibility regardless of your role. With your help, we can ensure a safe and healthy environment for our patients to receive excellent care while also protecting the health and well-being of staff, the public, and contractor personnel. Emergency notification at our facilities. To begin, we'd like you to know about the emergency contact numbers we use at our facilities. These numbers should be used in the event of a fire, spill, or medical emergency. For non-emergency situations, it is best practice to communicate directly with your superintendent or construction management team or with your Mount Sinai project manager. Emergency codes. With the exception of code red, our hospitals no longer use the code system to identify emergencies. All locations now use plain language alerts for informing staff and others of emergency situations. The plain language alerts allow individuals to clearly understand emergent events and to act appropriately. Contractor personnel should pay close attention to any alerts that are announced over the public address system and be ready to act appropriately. Emergency alerts will indicate the type of alert, the type of emergency, and the location of the emergency or event. They may also include some specific instructions. Hospital issued identification. One of the ways that Mount Sinai Health System protects the security of our patients and staff is to provide identification to contractor personnel who are authorized to work at our facilities, either long-term or short-term. All contractor personnel will be provided with hospital-issued identification, which must be worn above the waist and visible at all times. Contractor identification may consist of either temporary passes or long-term badges. Contractor employees should not begin work until they have received and donned their identification. Contractor personnel may be challenged by staff or hospital surveyors to show their hospital-issued identification at any time. No smoking policy. Mount Sinai Health System locations are no smoking facilities. 
New York City mandates that smoking is not permitted within 15 feet of a hospital building. Not only is smoking inside public buildings within New York City against the law, it also creates a substantial hazard due to the potential for accidental fires. Additionally, Mount Sinai does not allow the use of e-cigarettes, vaping equipment, or other means of delivery of nicotine or controlled substances, including cannabis. Fire safety and interim life safety measures. Fire risks in construction job sites almost certainly present the most immediate threat to the safety of our patients and staff. While other hazards may take some time to show adverse effects, fires can quickly get out of hand and spread into patient care areas. Mount Sinai Health System locations implement interim life safety measures, or ILSMs, to compensate for hazards created during construction or maintenance activities. These ILSMs include a series of administrative actions intended to offset the risk created by such actions as performing hot work or taking smoke detectors, sprinklers, or other life safety components offline for an extended period of time. All contractor personnel must be aware of the interim life safety measures being implemented on their job site. During construction work in job sites with fire sprinklers, the job site needs to have the ceiling grid in place, the sprinkler heads turned upwards, or the job site monitored by a fire guard. A fire guard is a person holding a certificate of fitness for performing fire safety duties as prescribed by the ILSM, and who is trained in and responsible for maintaining a fire watch. Construction barriers. Construction barriers are a key element to slowing the spread of dust, smoke, and fire from construction job sites, providing our staff precious minutes to facilitate the movement of patients and staff to a safe location. The construction barrier can be thought of as an envelope that contains the work and provides a separation between construction and non-construction areas. Therefore, it is vital that construction personnel and construction management staff maintain their construction barrier at all times. A construction barrier consists of a one-hour, code-compliant, fire-rated partition for job sites without fire suppression systems. This partition must be constructed of flame retardant materials. The barrier must extend from the floor slab to the roof slab and be free of penetrations through which smoke or dust may travel. Construction personnel should inform their construction management team if they observe any deficiencies in the job site barrier so that these can be corrected immediately. Where hard barriers are erected, the construction site entrance must include a fire-rated, self-closing, and positive latching door. Doors must be properly maintained during the construction project to ensure that they do not become damaged or fail to self-close. The door should include a locking mechanism with a combination code to prevent unauthorized access. The combination code must be made available to Mount Sinai Health System personnel to ensure access to the job site. Code Red. Code Red alerts hospital staff to a fire or probable fire. A Code Red may also be activated if someone smells or sees smoke. This code will often come with information about the fire's location and may require evacuation. Any hospital or Mount Sinai Health System location may announce a code red when a staff member or visitor has a reason to believe there is a fire emergency in the building. During a code red, hospital staff will have different responsibilities depending on their position. Some members of the staff will be working to move patients who are vulnerable to the fire to safe locations. In a hospital, this typically takes the form of horizontal evacuations to unaffected smoke compartments. Other staff members may be responsible for assessing patients' injuries, including traumas, burns, and smoke inhalation. In extreme instances, contractor personnel may be asked to assist clinical staff 
in evacuating patients to a safe location. Hot work. Hot work is any work that generates sparks or flames, including torch work or grinding, or produces high temperatures. Hot work must be approved and coordinated with fire safety. To perform hot work, the contractor must hold a valid FDNY certificate of fitness for each discipline, such as torch operator or fire watch. A permit must be obtained from fire safety prior to performing hot work. A new permit is required each day. The hot work permit must be posted at or near the location where the work is being performed. A fire watch must be assigned by the contractor and be present when such work is in progress. The fire watch must stay at the location for 30 minutes or more following the completion of the hot work. The individual performing the fire watch must be dedicated to that responsibility and must have access to communication with the site's security command center. The fire watch may not perform any other duties while monitoring hot work, regardless of how minor. The fire watch may not be distracted in any way. He or she must remain attentive to the hot work at all times. The fire watch must have a code compliant fire extinguisher readily available. Contractors performing hot work must ensure that flammable and combustible materials are removed from the area of hot work. Above ceiling work and fire stopping. Some construction, renovation, maintenance, and cabling projects may require contractors to perform work above ceiling tiles. However, it isn't always clear what one will find above the ceiling tiles. It is a space that generally goes for long periods without being disturbed. This allows dust to settle on surfaces. These spaces are also susceptible to moisture intrusion due to condensation, leaks, and poor air movement. In a hospital setting, Simply removing ceiling tiles can create a health risk to some patients. Above ceiling work may lead to exposure to dust and potentially hazardous fungal spores. To help minimize this risk, all work above the ceilings requires an above ceiling work permit issued by engineering. Infection Prevention and Control, the ICRA. Construction and renovation work within a healthcare setting requires a clean and sanitary environment to improve health outcomes for our patients. One cause of healthcare associated infections can be the introduction of contaminants into the air during construction projects that are not properly managed. Therefore, dust control at the Mount Sinai Health System is of the utmost importance for the safety of our patients. The primary means of reducing the risk associated with construction dust include erection of suitable construction barriers, maintaining job sites under negative pressure, proper housekeeping, the use of dust control mats, and proper covering of materials before leaving the job site. Infection prevention will determine the level of protection for your job site based on the type of work being performed and the area where it is occurring. This determination is called an Infection Control Risk Assessment, or ICRA. It is perhaps one of the most important parts of your job site safety plan. Strict adherence to the ICRA is expected by all workers. In most cases, Mount Sinai Health System infection prevention practitioners will require job sites and clinical areas to be maintained within a dust-tight construction barrier and to be under negative pressure. The preferred methods of preventing dust from leaving the job site on workers' feet or trash cart wheels is the use of walk-off mats or adhesive floor mats. All contractor waste containers must be tightly covered when in transit. The cover must fully encompass the waste and must be secured in place to prevent opening during transport. The cover must not have holes. In some cases where patients are particularly susceptible to infection, you may even be asked to wear special clothing, such as shoe covers, coveralls, and head covers. This helps us to ensure that the dust inside of the job site remains inside of the job site. 
If you feel that your job site is no longer under negative pressure, please inform your supervisor immediately. Housekeeping and combustible material. Contractors must ensure that their work area is kept in a clean and sanitary condition. All construction debris must be removed as work progresses to prevent fire hazards or dust migration. Waste should also be removed at the end of each work shift. Combustible materials must be kept to an absolute minimum. Under no circumstance shall trash or debris be stored overnight within buildings. Only carts with a cleanable surface are permitted to transport waste or debris from the site. Cloth-sided carts are prohibited. All carts must be covered with secured, fire-rated plastic when being transported for disposal. The outside of the cart must also be cleaned before being transported throughout or out of the hospital. Contractor personnel must use designated elevators to enter and leave their job site or to transport construction debris. Where possible, contractors should use service elevators rather than patient or public elevators. All elevators must be monitored for signs of dust being transported from the construction job site. If you observe signs of construction dust in elevators, please ensure that the elevator is cleaned immediately. Work areas must be vacuumed using a vacuum with a high efficiency particulate air filter daily and as the progress of the work dictates. The vacuum must have a replacement filter available at all times. Job sites should be left as clean and dust-free as possible at the end of the shift. Demolition. Demolition work involves many of the hazards associated with construction. However, demolition involves additional hazards due to unknown factors, which makes demolition work particularly dangerous. To mitigate these hazards, it is important that demolition crews are aware of the hazards and are highly skilled at avoiding them. This requires detailed planning and instruction of workers. Prior to commencement of demolition activities, a demolition plan must be developed that describes the method and sequence of demolition. The demolition plan must be prepared by a competent person who will review architectural drawings, floor plans, and utility line schematics. This plan must clearly designate the area to be demolished and specify the manner in which the demolition will safely be conducted. In preparation for demolition work, a pre-demolition walkthrough of the demolition area must be conducted with those involved so that the plan and safety requirements are known. Under no circumstance is a contractor to perform blind demolition work if confidence in the architectural drawings or floor plans is low or where there is the potential for obscured utilities or structural components which may compromise Mount Sinai Health System operations if damaged. All walls, floors, and ceilings to be demolished must undergo visual observation and GPR scanning, X-ray imaging, or hand excavation to determine the presence of energized wiring and plumbing components. All active utilities must be flagged every 12 to 18 inches for the entire length of the exposed utility and where they make a change of direction. The contractors will make sure that all electric, gas, water, steam, sewer, and other services are shut off, capped, or otherwise controlled. This work should be coordinated with your project manager and engineering as described in the utility system shutdown procedure. If medical gases, laboratory gases, or medical gas isolation valves are present inside the job site, they must be protected from damage or tampering and physically supported in position. Workers must be trained in the proper emergency procedures relative to the medical gases. Signage must be posted indicating the telephone numbers of emergency contact personnel and the steps to take during an emergency or release. Utility system shutdowns. As mentioned previously, 
impacts to the utility systems in a hospital or research setting can have devastating, even life-threatening consequences. For this reason, protecting utility systems during construction and renovation projects is imperative. Mount Sinai Health System has an organized procedure to manage the shutdown and restoration of utilities distribution that facilitates construction project activities and coordinates all phases of planning, communication, and execution. Utility systems shutdowns will be managed in coordination with the engineering department at the facility. Shutdown requests should follow the Mount Sinai Health System procedure and should be made at least 10 days in advance of the shutdown. Utility shutdowns should occur during the normal working hours of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. whenever possible in order to ensure that all necessary Mount Sinai Health System staff are available. Contractors are strictly prohibited from operating building distribution control devices or any alteration of live services without specific authorization. Lockout, tagout, and live electrical work. Hospitals typically have numerous pieces of equipment that assist in their operation and delivery of services. On-site equipment can include boilers, chillers, air handler units, sterilizers, vacuum pumps, generators, and a host of other operating equipment. It can be very challenging to manage all the equipment. When contractors perform work on this equipment, it has the potential to result in serious injury to contractor personnel if not managed properly. Equipment must be properly locked and tagged out to prevent the unexpected startup or energization of the equipment. Any contractor or vendor involved in the servicing or maintenance of this equipment must have a lockout tagout program and each of its authorized employees must be trained. As with utility system shutdowns, the locking and tagging out of hospital equipment must be coordinated with the engineering department. Engineering will complete the physical shutdown and isolation of all energy sources using the written lockout tagout procedures attached to the equipment. All workers involved in the servicing or maintenance work will then apply their own locks and tags either to the energy isolation points or to a group lockbox. When the work is completed, the removal of locks and tags will also be coordinated with engineering. Under no circumstance should a contractor or vendor perform work on Mount Sinai Health System equipment without performing proper lockout and tagout. No exceptions. Similarly, to the extent possible, contractors should not engage in work on live electrical equipment. Such work may only be performed by licensed and qualified electricians in coordination with Mount Sinai Health System and under very strict constraints. Fall protection, ladders, and scaffolding. Falls from height are considered to be one of the top hazards in the construction industry and are responsible for more deaths and serious injuries than nearly any other hazard. As such, all work at heights at Mount Sinai Health System will be closely monitored for adherence to applicable regulations. No contractor employee should be exposed to fall hazards greater than six feet from any walking and working surface or 10 feet from a scaffold. Contractor employees who violate fall protection requirements will be removed from the job and will not be permitted to return. Ladders can be useful tools when performing work. However, they can also be very hazardous. Falls from ladders, even short ladders, can result in serious injury. Therefore, where possible, contractors should avoid the use of standard portable ladders in favor of safer, more stable means of working at heights. This may include the use of scissor lifts, baker scaffolds, and podium or platform ladders. Prior to using any ladder on site, contractor employees are required to inspect the ladder for defects. Ladders with any defect that may compromise the safety of the ladder user must be removed from service. Employees are prohibited from standing on the top rung of any ladder. Additionally, employees should maintain at least three points of contact with the ladder when ascending or descending the ladder. 
Mount Sinai prohibits the use of wooden ladders. For all projects where scaffolding will be used, a competent person must be designated. It is the competent person's responsibility to oversee the proper erection, use, inspection, and dismantling of the scaffolding. The competent person must review the feasibility of the use of fall protection during the erection and dismantling phases. The competent person must also inspect each scaffold for defects on a daily basis. Workers must be protected from falling through the use of a compliant guardrail system. Workers may not access scaffolds by climbing cross braces. Asbestos. Mount Sinai Health System has many buildings that predate the EPA ban on asbestos in manufactured goods. While much of it has been remediated during infrastructure improvement projects, some may still exist. Asbestos is commonly found in surfacing material that is sprayed on, troweled on, or otherwise applied to surfaces, such as with acoustical plaster on ceilings and fireproofing materials on structural members. It may also be found in insulation, pipe lagging, pipe wrap, floor tiles, mastic, and ceiling tiles. Where asbestos has been identified, it will have a label indicating so. Mechanical rooms where asbestos is presumed to be present will have signage at the entrance to the room. In the event of damage or disturbance to asbestos-containing or presumed asbestos-containing material, contractors must stop the work immediately, report the issue to the project manager, and isolate the area to keep personnel out until corrective actions are complete. For a review of potential asbestos locations within Mount Sinai, contractors are asked to review information with the project manager or environmental health and safety. Behavioral health units. Work conducted inside of inpatient behavioral health or psychiatric units is considered high risk because of the myriad of hazards patients and workers may be exposed to. In some cases, patients within behavioral health units are at increased risk for self-harm. Mount Sinai has gone to great lengths to eliminate any hazards existing in these units. Even a single tool left by a worker or a scrap of material carelessly discarded may lead to devastating consequences. Contractors performing work in these units must have a clear plan to address risks while working within these units. Workers must be attentive at all times. All work activities will be monitored by a security guard or Mount Sinai Health System representative for the duration of the work. Contractors performing work in these units should have only the essential items with them. All carts or toolboxes entering the unit must be lockable and must remain locked while inside the unit. Tools and equipment not actively being used must be stored until needed. Radios and other audio devices are not permitted in the unit as they may disturb the patients. Lanyards used to hold hospital-issued identification shall be of the breakaway type. Contractors working in behavioral health units must also maintain an inventory of all tools and materials that they bring into the unit. Every item taken into the unit must come out of the unit. Confined Space Entry Mount Sinai Health System has gone to great lengths to identify, characterize, and mark all of the confined spaces at its various facilities. Mount Sinai Health System does not allow entry into confined spaces except by trained and authorized contractor personnel. Contractors who do enter into confined spaces must adhere to the entry requirements, including air monitoring, ventilation, and rescue and retrieval. Many spaces can be reclassified or entered using alternate procedures by eliminating any hazards found inside. Mount Sinai Health System Environmental Health and Safety must be notified prior to entering into any confined space. Hazardous Materials 
Hazardous materials refer generally to hazardous substances that exhibit corrosive, poisonous, flammable, and or reactive properties and have the potential to harm human health or the environment. Hazardous materials are almost always found on construction projects in a wide variety of products, ranging from simple cleaning materials to compressed gases to byproducts of construction processes. Regardless of their source, hazardous materials must be managed appropriately. All contractors who work with or may be exposed to hazardous chemicals or materials must have a hazard communication program that complies with OSHA standards. A copy of the hazard communication program and associated safety data sheets must be available on site for the duration of the project. All hazardous chemical containers must be labeled with the identity of the hazardous chemicals they contain and must show hazard warnings appropriate for employee protection. Though contractor employees should not be exposed to Mount Sinai chemicals within their job sites, we maintain a chemical inventory and safety data sheets for any chemical or substances that contractor employees may inadvertently encounter. If you have questions or concerns about a possible exposure, please contact Environmental Health and Safety for guidance. Mount Sinai Health System prohibits the storing of flammable materials within construction job sites overnight. Flammable liquids shall be kept in closed containers when not in use. Flammable and combustible liquids must be removed from the work area and returned to the storage area after each work shift. All compressed gas cylinders must be removed from buildings at the end of the work shift or when not in use. Storage of such cylinders inside of gang boxes or non-approved cabinets is prohibited. If the gas cylinders are approved for outside storage on Mount Sinai Health System premises, the contractor's name must be indicated on the cylinders. Spills. If contractors will be working with hazardous chemicals near drains, manholes or stormwater drainage systems, they must have protective diking or containment in place. Contractors must not spill, discharge, or release any hazardous material on Mount Sinai Health System property. Spills or releases of any size must be reported to security and environmental health and safety. PPE hard hats. It is the responsibility of all contractors to determine which personal protective equipment is required to safely perform their work based on the hazards to which workers may be exposed. However, Mount Sinai Health System does have expectations for baseline PPE to be worn in construction sites. Contractor employees must wear hard hats upon entry to any construction job site at Mount Sinai Health System. Hard hats must be worn for the duration of the project. Suitable work shoes are also required. Though Mount Sinai Health System does not mandate the use of safety shoes for all activities, contractor employees should, at a minimum, wear sturdy work boots inside construction zones. Flip-flops, open-toed shoes, and shoes with soft soles, such as tennis shoes, are prohibited. Protect yourself, infectious diseases, vaccination. Hand hygiene, social distancing, and mask wearing are important ways we can help limit the spread of infectious diseases while working in a healthcare setting. Hand hygiene has long been an effective tool used by healthcare workers to prevent the spread of diseases. Hand washing can prevent the spread of germs, including those that are resistant to antibiotics. You will find bathroom sinks and hand sanitizer stations located throughout Mount Sinai locations. We strongly encourage you to practice effective hand hygiene while on our campuses. Many studies have also shown that medical grade masks slash the chances of both transmitting and catching infectious diseases such as COVID-19 in healthcare facilities. In fact, 
Some studies even hint that masks might reduce the severity of infection if people do contract the disease. Luckily, these aren't the only protection we have. In many cases, vaccinations are available to reduce the spread and severity of infectious diseases. It is important to pay careful attention to the most recent guidance provided to us by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as Mount Sinai Infection Prevention. Infection prevention practitioners keep careful tabs on the current rates of infection in our local communities. They will establish standards for contractor vaccinations, masking, and other methods of disease prevention. These standards must be adhered to in order to work at Mount Sinai Health System and may frequently change with the level of COVID-19 infection in the community. Check with your supervisor to learn whether or not masking was required at your job site. For contractor managers, there are several key elements of the Mount Sinai Health System contractor oversight policy that are essential for all general contractors, prime contractors, and construction management teams to be aware of. The elements are managed by Mount Sinai Health System uniformly across the various locations to help ensure a consistent, coherent implementation of the policy. Pre-qualification. All contractors performing work at any Mount Sinai Health System location must be pre-qualified and approved by environmental health and safety, without exception. All tiers of contractors must complete the pre-qualification process. Subcontractors do not fall under the umbrella of their prime or hiring contractor. Pre-qualification approvals are not transferable. The use of unapproved or disqualified subcontractors at Mount Sinai Health System may result in the dismissal of both the subcontractor and their hiring contractor. Pre-construction risk assessment, or PICRA. In advance of the start of a project, Mount Sinai must perform a risk assessment to determine the level of risk the construction activities will present. The assessment covers potential risks to patients, staff, visitors, or assets for air quality, fire and life safety, infection prevention, utility disruptions, dust generation, hazardous materials, noise, vibration, and any other hazards applicable to the work. The pre-construction risk assessment will help to set the ground rules for the project relative to health and safety. No project may commence without first having performed this assessment and without being issued an authorization permit. Projects started without this assessment and approval will be immediately stopped. The pre-construction risk assessment is initiated by the Mount Sinai project manager using our automated safety management platform. Upon final review and approval by all departments, the automated application will generate the final PICRA package. The PICRA package must be printed and posted at the entrance to the job site for review by the Mount Sinai inspection teams, as well as external surveyors and inspectors. Inspections. Mount Sinai inspectors will perform regular announced and unannounced inspections of contractor job sites, either individually or as a team. Inspection teams consist of members from environmental health and safety, infection prevention, fire safety, and engineering. Non-compliant conditions may result in the issuance of corrective actions. These corrective actions will be sent to the contractor using the automated safety management application. It is the contractor's responsibility to respond to corrective action requests in a timely manner. Health and Safety Plan, or HASP. All projects must have a job site-specific health and safety plan, or HASP. The health and safety plan is the blueprint for how the project will be conducted with regard to health and safety compliance. It may include generic company policies and procedures, but must also address specific tasks and safety requirements for the project. All contractor personnel must comply with the requirements of their job site health and safety plan. 
training. It is the responsibility of all contractors to provide their employees with training specific to the hazards to which they may be exposed, to their company-specific safety and health programs, and as required by OSHA requirements. It is also the responsibility of all contractors to ensure that their employees and subcontractors have reviewed this training presentation and obtained signed certification prior to the start of work. The safety orientation must also include a review of the relevant sections of the PICRA document. Communication. It is the responsibility of the general contractor, construction manager, or lead contractor for the project to ensure communication of all safety-related items to all contractors performing work on the job site. Items which Mount Sinai Health System has communicated, such as the locations of safety data sheets, the location of special hazards contractors may encounter, and locations of asbestos or lead must be relayed to all subcontractors. Similarly, Mount Sinai must be aware of certain potentially hazardous operations, such as hot work, confined space entries, and equipment shutdowns, among others. Mount Sinai must be informed of all accidents and near misses that occur on your job site. Though our primary interest is the health and well-being of our patients and staff, we must also protect the interest of the public, our subcontractors, our materials, and our equipment. It is the job of the foremen and superintendents to investigate accidents when they occur. Postings. For construction projects, the contractor must post an accurate list of all emergency contact information, including availability and multiple contact telephone numbers. This is critical to ensure that at any time, day or night, a responsible person can be reached to address any type of emergency that may arise. Final but important notes. To close, there are some final but important items that you as construction management personnel should be aware of. Be sure to follow the requirements indicated by our infection prevention practitioners with regard to maintaining negative pressure in the job site and the placement and venting of negative air machines. Negative air machines must be in operation at all times, even after hours. Filters and pre-filters must be changed if visibly soiled. A copy of the operator's manual must be present with each negative air machine. Job sites requiring negative pressure must have a functioning manometer to measure the pressure differential between the job site and adjacent locations. The manometer must be calibrated at least daily. Manometers that enter hibernation mode or do not continually display the pressure reading are not permitted. A calibration log for the manometer should be kept near the manometer or in a project binder. As the management team overseeing the project, it is your responsibility to maintain all necessary documentation to ensure that you are complying with all internal and external regulations and requirements. You must be able to demonstrate your oversight of the project at a moment's notice. Finally, there are several regulatory agencies charged with enforcing regulations as they apply to the construction industry. Among these are the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the Department of Environmental Protection, the Environmental Protection Agency, and FDNY. Should your job site be visited by officials from any regulatory agencies, you must inform environmental health and safety immediately. Once again, we appreciate your attention and look forward to working together with you. Thank you and welcome to Mount Sinai.